Okay, now let's let's look forward. Okay, now we got you know Ilya Deporia. Now I know after last mighty, uh, mighty cast we had you on, we didn't record it, but you're saying I'm gonna make it look easy. I'm gonna break this man. I'm gonna take it to him, right? And I yes, think, uh, and here's the thing, I'm excited for it because we oh know man, I can't wait. We know he's gonna bring it. We know you're gonna bring. It. You never back down from anybody. Right? How how's your body feeling going into this fight, and how's the weight cut going? Because last time you were at 155, you looked strong mm -hmm. at 155, and I'm sure you probably kept some of that muscle going back down to 145. How is your body feeling right now with the whole thing cutting cutting the calories? Now you're gonna be in a deficit. Talk to me. I feel good, bro. I feel good. I mean, I I always track. I always track. I'm a I'm a numbers guy. I like tracking stuff. Mm. And uh, we've been tracking my weight for this one, and I'm ahead. I'm ahead than uh, than most recent of my 45 fights, and I wanted to be ahead too because the last 45 fights I only been making it to 46 anyway. Mm -hmm. In the last two, so we know we got to get to the 40. Uh, we know we got to get flat to 45, and we know that one pound can be pain in the ass sometimes. So I'm just ahead, bro. I'm way ahead. I feel good. I feel great. I feel strong. Like you said, man, I just, I can't wait to fight this guy, man. Mm. You know, I, I, I've been, I've been, what I've been saying, I've been telling people, this guy is writing checks with his mouth that his body might not be able to cash. So we get <laughs> to find out come October 26th. <laughs> now, how big do you get? Like, are you up at 170 now or are you still staying at 160? Like, wh how big do you get outside of camp? Like, I'm sure, like, how big do you get outside of camp and how big are you when you're like just training? Like you're, you're six weeks out from the fight. Man, um, can't tell you. I like everybody guessing. I like keeping everyone guessing. You well, know. Well, fuck. Last, for, for, last time we had, you know, they know. They know they can, I could be one hundred eighty-five, two hundred pounds. Last time I checked, I was the biggest. I was sleeping in milk shake. So <laughs> exactly. I keep wondering. <laughs> well, I remember last time we were hanging out. It was, it was a while ago, and you came back home from Japan, and you a big motherfucker. And it wasn't like you were fat. You were just a big frame and then you came on the show you're like dude i have the shortest reach in the division i got t-rex arms yeah. and i'm like i'm a t-rex bro how, how's that fucking possible you're like six eight aren't you uh brother six eight like 250 pounds dc keep annoying uh, like uh not trying to fight me he's in retirement out of retirement i don't know what do you want to do you probably want to fight for the daddest man on the planet he should let me know you probably beat him to be honest with you you'll probably I'll strike him easily easy work uh, DC thinks he's gonna just take me down like it's like it's like it's an easy <laughs> thing or something. I'm like, no, DC. <laughs> nobody. No, it's it's interesting because typically all your fights stay on the feet, right? Like uh -huh. I remember we talked last time when you fought Aldo and you start throwing those body kicks. I was like, ooh, I like this. This is a different like kind of weapon that you typically aren't. We aren't used to see you do right. Usually, it's the hands mm -hmm. you move, wop wop, and you move out in and out because. You seem to have the longer reach on people because the way you move in and out, but you know, but the numbers don't lie. You don't, so it's very interesting. So I think with DC, you probably piece him up as well. Yeah, thank you. Finally, someone's agree with me, bro. Every, that's why you the man, brother. I you mean, DC, DJ, you got the some of you got the best mind in MMA. If he said it, it's true, guys. All you, all you internet guys, all you guys that's going to be in the comment later on, shut up. Most of you don't know shit about MMA. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Uh, I, I did a bunch of interviews uh, yesterday or the day before. I forgot what day, what day I did it, but they asked me, oh, how do you feel about uh, to put a comedy on your post? I don't know if you know this, but he did. He said, let's go, Max. Mm -hmm. One of my posts, and I was like, I don't know. I didn't, like, that's kind of freaking, that's kind of crazy. Like, you have to put time and effort to think and, and go here. Like, I don't really care about social media. Sometimes I see shit. I didn't see that, but I was laughing, you know? And, and um, but... The truth of the matter is, Tapura just might be a fan. He might be yeah. really cheering for me in this fight. And, and he is, you know, every fight, every time I fight, brother, he always had nothing, some, something nice to say, you know, like, Sir Pasano, whatever he's trying to do, I get it. I understand we're in the entertainment business, but brother's odd. He's awkward. And just be, be the nice guy, bro. I think, I think a lot of people love him if, he, if he's a nice guy. You know, some of the stuff he's saying is like out of pocket, but hey, if that's what he needs, He's an odd little man, and that's what he needs. Stay odd, keep odd, bro, because I want the best Ilya Tapura come October twenty sixth. Mm, I love that. I love that. Well, I think, I think besides you guys fighting, I think he is a big fan of you because you've done so much for the sport of mixed martial arts 
the beginning of your career and up to this point taking dangerous fights. I mean, at what point in time you're going to fight Habib Megamerdoff, you know, on a short notice, right? And then mm-hmm. you fight Justin Gaethje for the baddest motherfucker, the belt. And you kind of went off, like we like to call them side quests. You went off and did a side quest, run that belt. And now you're coming back to the main storyline, the main campaign to, you know, get your belt back in 145. Now, when you look at this fight, when I look at Ilya Deporia, I'll say the thing he does very well is that he puts himself in the fire to fight. You know, you look at the fight when he fought Jay Herbert, he got hurt a lot. Right, he got hurt a lot, made some adjustments. When he fought Alex Volkanovski, he couldn't get to Alex Volkanovski. He has to, Ilya Teporia has to get to the right spot to be dangerous. Right, if he can't get to that spot, if he can't get to that, he has a hard time. You look at the fight when he fought Bryce Mitchell. Bryce Mitchell made him miss all over the fucking place. Right, so when I look at this, he has to get that that right spot. Then I can go. If I can't get there, I'm always going to be chasing you. Yeah, I mean. He, he he's he's good, bro. You know, oh, yeah. I can be here, be a hater, and, and 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 a lot of people is like, oh, he did this. A lot of people like talking about like uh, our way to the title. You know, like like with Volk, like you know, I give him his, I I give him his respect, yo. He's the champion of the world for a reason. He beat a guy that I had three cracks at. He did it in one. Mm-hmm. You know, but when but a lot of people, what people are mad about, and I understand it is like the strength of his schedule getting to that fight. You know, like mm. if we compared my strain of my schedule to get to the title fight versus his, it's, it's a no brainer. You know, who's who, whose schedule was harder? But at the end of the day, guys got to keep remembering that this guy had to win. That you cannot be mad at him because yeah, whatever it is, he still had to beat these guys. Yep. And beating people is not hard. Uh, it's not easy. I mean, it's super hard. Yep. And any given day, someone can win, especially in this sports of mixed martial arts. You know, you could have an off day, you could be sick. It could just be on that day. You don't, you don't know what happens, you know. And and this this part is weird, bro. We saw crazy stuff happen mm-hmm. in, in mixed martial arts. So at the end of the day, you know, it's all respect to him. But I get to show and I get to prove, you know, when I was his age, the way he was talking, the way he's talking right now. When I was his age, last time I checked, I think I was younger or his age. I had title defenses already, yep. and just win the title. I had title defenses, and when I won the t- and when I won my first title, I turned around like pretty quick. In the year to fight, yep. you know, I didn't wait. I didn't wait. I didn't wait like forever to go again. So I'm just happy, you know. I, I'm in there. I'm in that point of where I got to fight all the guys who I watched on WEC and coming up, and and now I get to fight this new generation, and I'm excited for it, man. I can't wait for it. Uh, he's a he's one of the first new generation. He's the new generation champ. He's considered. So I go out there, I get my hand raised, and show everybody that I'm stood around. Boom. Well, it's kind of crazy when you <clears throat> say the new generational champ because you're still young. You're, you're 32. You'll be 33 soon. And the fact that you've had you've been in the UFC at fighting at the highest level for so long and you still have four to five years left in your career. Because I know you said you stopped sparring, right? Like you stopped sparring as much in your, in your training. Have you gone back to sparring a little bit or are you still the same where you're yeah. like, okay, I'm not sparring? Yeah, anymore. yeah. So we've been, we've been sparring a little bit, you know, especially... Especially with going up a week class and fighting Justin Gaethje, brother, I was like, "We get to sparring, bro. This man, this man, this, this man, different, bro. We need, we need to get back, you know. And then even with Elia, you know, he, we know he's a power puncher. We know he likes, he likes, like you said, being in the fire. Yep. You know, I, I love being in the fire. Mm-hmm. I, uh, a lot of people keep telling me that uh, some of his best work is inside the pocket, and I'm like, I mean, I guess you guys don't see watch too much of my fights because. <laughs> I live there. I love it. I, 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 if you want, if you want fire, I love fire, man. I, I love going in there. I like mixing it. Like I said, I mean, I might have, I, I might have a reach advantage on him, but I, I highly doubt it because my T Rex arms is still incapable. Even though I'm taller than him by like what a, f- a foot, I, I, I still gonna have not a reach. You know, his reach is like freaking. My reach is just T Rex max, bro. I, I should change my name for for the last couple fights of my career. You should get a member of the T Rex. You, you, you should get a shirt made like fucking uh, Total Recall. Have you seen that movie? It's an old school movie with Donald Schwarzenegger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know when he yeah. opens a uh, uh, Quaid? Uh, not Quaid. Uh, God, what was the guy who was in the homeboy's belly and he opened it up and his arms were like, ah, Quaid, open <laughs> your mind. You should get a shirt like that made. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> that is terrible. <laughs> well, you said it, T Rex Max. So I'm just sitting here, it's like, oh, oh yeah. 
Now, if you guys enjoyed that clip and you want to check out the whole video, click right here. And if you guys want to see other clips from this channel, click right here. Enjoy.